thank you all. Um, this is a really great opportunity, and I'm really honored and privileged to be here to talk to you about my work. Um, I'm Karen Abrams. I'm the Community and Affairs and Diversity Manager at the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh. I've been doing that work for about five years. And um, I have this mantra that I've acquired, adopted, stay woke, get lit. It's very African-American based urban culture phrases that really talk about people being aware of their surroundings and situations and taking action. And so I've tried to describe my work. Um, it's, it's very complicated and it's very difficult. Um, and I love my job, I really do. And, and I'm, I feel grateful to have my job. Um, and so I use so many words to describe it, and really just one word describes my work. It is to dismantle the racism. And I think the entire Loeb cohort here this year is really facing the same kinds of issues and isms. And it may not be around race. I mean, we're talking about digital justice. We're talking about vulnerable aging populations. We're talking about progressive policies and preservation and higher design standards for all citizens in Dallas. We're talking about environmental justice and vulnerable populations. We're asking questions like, how and why do we build our cities and who benefits from them and who makes the decisions around them? We're talking about political and social exclusion in refugee camps. Ecological sustainability for vulnerable populations. These are all equity questions. Architecture that is equitable. This is our cohort, and this is what we're trying to address. And it's really just that simple for me. Um, we can't talk about cities and planning and design and architecture without talking about race and racism. It is structural, it is institutional, it is personal, it is in our language, it's in our DNA. The federal government made it almost impossible for African Americans and other non-whites to leave cities. And with the assistance of local governments and redevelopment agencies like the one that I work for and banks, we just couldn't leave. We were facing the same kind of issues but could not leave. And at every turn, we tried to get out. Government said, no, you cannot get out. The Federal Housing Administration and the interstate highway system. I mean, we were highways built to get people out of there. We couldn't leave. And these highways destroyed neighborhoods also. So I love cities. I grew up <laughs> in the best city in the world as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and I grew up in Harlem, and that is the center of black culture in this country. And I am privileged to have grown up in Harlem. It's the center, it's the people call it the black mecca. This is, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. This is what I grew up with. This is what we had to create culture. And this changed a lot. But we had to do what we had to do to make these places work for us. And we did, and we still continue to do that. And I wouldn't, I mean, this, this is hard life. This is hard, right? But it made me who I am today. <laughs> this is where I live now. I'm in the Hill District neighborhood of Pittsburgh. And they used to call this neighborhood Little Harlem because it was the center of black life and still kind of is in Pittsburgh. And this is my block, actually. This house, this, that uh, building was demolished right before, after I moved in. And that car is still sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> it's my neighbor's car, and I love them. And then this is, you know, this is my block. This is, there are like six or eight houses on this block. This is what's left. And these people are very proud. They want this stuff back because there's been disinvestment in these neighborhoods for so long. This is the council person. People live in these places, and 
black people in Pittsburgh don't have the same privilege as Harlemites do. You know, people don't know about the Hill District. They know about it, but you know, it's 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 not this urgency. It's this is hard work. And all black people want, and I talk about black people because specifically in Pittsburgh, it is a black and white city. It is 25% African American, 64% white. Asians and Hispanics, while growing, are very small populations. So there are not very many black neighborhoods. I mean, neighborhoods of color of other other ethnicities. But we want, this, we want the same thing everybody else wants. We want to be happy. We want community. We want safety. We want good schools. We want good jobs. We want to, we want access and power to do these things. We don't have it. We want to, we want to end racism. And I could have put up slides of blight maps and graphs. But we all have seen those before. We all get it. We need to change the system. And most often than not, African Americans are asked to do that. <laughs> we're the victims of racism, but we're oftentimes the ones who are screaming the loudest about it. And when you have a disparity like this, the University of Pittsburgh puts out a report every year about the disparities in Pittsburgh, every year. And we look at it and go, oh my god, this is horrible, and we keep going. Like, it just, this is Pittsburgh. I'm not talking about this inner city. This is just Pittsburgh. When you have a despair like this, this is about education. This is about criminal justice system. This is about workforce. This is about health. You expect people who are making half <laughs> of their white counterparts are making to do the work to end racism. That is a crazy proposition. It is one that I've taken on, and I must be crazy, I guess. But it's important to me. Planning and design and architecture, we have to talk about this explicitly. And I know that this is Harvard and we talk about this in classrooms, but Pittsburgh does not talk about this work. So I, again, love my job. I have allies at my job. My boss is a huge advocate of mine, white male, the mayor, huge advocate, wants me to be a part of all these things. My old boss works at a foundation. We are all trying to figure out how to get to solve these problems. I was sent to Germany, to Hamburg, Germany, <laughs> to observe how they're dealing with the inequalities there. This is an economic problem. Germany is dealing with the problem of a dying German population. They're trying to figure this stuff out. For Pittsburgh, it's not quite there yet. But for the nation, this is about economics. This is about making people right in the survival of this country. But I've traveled around the country talking to different people. I've been to conferences. I got the Heinz Endowments, and they are great partners. The Urban Redevelopment Authority and another nonprofit sent 30 people to the Policy Link Conference. That, is, that may not seem like a big deal to you. <laughs> it is a huge deal in Pittsburgh. It is a huge deal. And so when I realized what I was doing, I realized that I'm asking, I'm asking white people to give up a system that has benefited them from the beginning of this country's existence. That is a difficult and crazy proposition. It is crazy, but people actually believe this. This is hard work. This is equity, inclusion, justice. This is, this is hard work. And it's, gonna not, it's not going to happen here. All of it won't happen here. A lot of the work will happen here, and eventually my backyard is where these conversations are happening. <laughs> It is a safe space for people of all ethnicities to talk about this work, a safe space. We debate. <laughs> My kitchen, living room, the whole house, safe space. We eat, we drink, we laugh, we debate some more. Mayor's office, foundation people, people from the URA where I work, people from the community, this is a network that I have to build in order to get people who do not talk to each other, who don't know each other, who don't know what people's lives are. When you get to know somebody, you start to break down those barriers. And it is so important to do this kind of work to get to the other place, because oftentimes, the people who get the resources and the money are the people who look like the people in power. And it's not African Americans. And I do miss these, these moments, because these are very, very, very important moments. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about just the kinds of programs that I do. And just a quick story. A couple of months ago, a group of us were talking about 
you know, our work. And um, a friend of mine who lives in a, in a place that doesn't value women, there's women are second class citizens. And she has to come to this country because she couldn't get a job. She's a woman, she was not married. She does not have a family, no education background that her, you know, she just did not have the things. Very, very smart person. And so she's in this country doing this work and somebody asked her, well, what happens if you go back to your country? Will people recognize you as a woman who's done powerful stuff? She's like, no, why would I do that? I'm just gonna show people what I do. I'm gonna scratch at the door and let other people kick it down. I cannot talk about racism like this at, in Pittsburgh because the conversation shuts down. All I can do is educate people and let them knock that door down. I can start scratching at it like she is and let people come knock it down. So I care deeply about educating people about the city and they have to love the city. They ha it, they, it's their city too and they don't feel like they're part of the city. So I have a program called Urban Matters and it's basically the Center for Urban Pedagogy, they came in and trained us on this. It's demystifying policy around planning, around land use, around design, and really getting students 21st century skills so they can use and deploy them in their neighborhoods, in their professions, wherever they go. They may leave Pittsburgh, that's fine. But they have this, they have this, these, these, these skills. And they go out into the city and they explore topics. On the bottom left, that's the mayor of Pittsburgh. They interviewed him a couple of weeks ago about stormwater management, and he was happy to help. Talked about all the inequities about the whole thing. He, they asked him a ton of questions, and in fact, some of the kids didn't even know who the mayor was. They didn't know his name, what it looked like, nothing. This is, this, this is huge work, and it's fun. Bottom right, they, they make t-shirts. I'm wearing one right now. <laughs> they promote their work. They're proud of what they've done, and we celebrate this. This is the pilot program called Land Bank 412. It's a nine minute video, talks about land banks. We passed legislation two years ago to establish a land bank to take care of the vacant properties and kind of manage them in a more effective and efficient way. They went around 207 people. Only six people knew what a land bank was. <laughs> they are educating residents about policy. And we celebrate this. They had a premiere, we had everybody there, it was great. They, and they didn't see the video until it was actually premiering. And they were so astounded about their work. The other thing that I do is these community toolkits. The University of Pittsburgh, I'm sorry, Carnegie Mellon University School of Architecture brings young black planning, design, and architecture professionals to the city of Pittsburgh. They know that we need more black people in the city to talk about this stuff. These are, this is my, this is the start of my army. Those young people, this is, these are the people who are going to be deployed. This is what I want. <laughs> I want people out in the neighborhoods talking about this stuff and teaching each other. These are the professionals. I learned planning and design on my own. <laughs> I'm not an expert at it, but I know enough to know that their things can change. This is, this process of taking interns into your organization and deploying them in black neighborhoods is transformational. It is fraught with anxiety. It is fraught with I mean, tears, yelling. I mean, these people hate me for making them do this. But if this is what we are going to do to change cities, we have to be able to talk to residents. Residents want to talk about what they want and they want you to help them. And that's what I do. I try to. I'm not sure how successful I am, but this is, what, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to educate people and get them out into community. And so they work with city planning. They work with elected officials, work with residents. Residents are excited. We get to talk to residents about what we do as a city. We are resources for them. They do a charrette, simple basic planning, simple basic stuff. Tears, I'm telling you. Like, Getting them out to community is hard work, and we need to teach them how to do this. So when it's all said and done, it's great. The mayor, this is what this looks like, and I have a copy of it here. This is a document that this young lady did in one year, and capturing what the neighborhood wanted. The mayor loves this stuff. <laughs> 
he, text, he tweeted this out. The Heinz Endowments gave, gave the community a quarter million dollars to do some of the work in here. This is the kind of stuff that we need to, to start doing more of with community. The young lady got a feature in Pittsburgh Magazine. She's got a great job. <laughs> this is what this is about for me. And I'm going to leave you with this one last slide because this is really important. And this is a city that has been divided for a very long time. And can I talk about race? And the mayor says, if it's not for all, it's not for us. We are trying. We are, we are going to make mistakes. I make mistakes all day. But that's how you learn how to do things right. I'm, Tony Griffin's here. She's been in Pittsburgh. I'm trying to learn from her. I'm trying to learn from everybody, even you. The African American Student Union, I know I saw somebody from. I really need your help. I need everybody's help. I need my fellows' help. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you so much.